in a grimy, gritty, near-future metropolis. A group of androids are going crazy and killing people. These androids were built, moreover, by a strange, secretive megacorporation housed in a large pyramidal building. Sound familiar? If so, it might reveal whether you're more of a classic live-action science fiction fa fan or an anime fan, because that might describe Blade Runner, and it might describe Bubblegum Crisis. So, Bubblegum Crisis came out well after Blade Runner. Is Bubblegum Crisis a ripoff of Blade Runner? Well, not to be that guy, but it depends on our definitions. What do we mean by ripoff? I have strong feelings about this because I feel that people use the word ripoff very blithely. Just they use it for everything, uh, very casually. But I think it's a pretty strong word, especially because it has some very negative connotations. So what do we mean when we say ripoff? In my opinion, we have a spectrum. And over here, we're at full 10 on the scale of ripoff. You're, let's say we're talking about a movie. The ripoff movie has the same plot. It has the same characters. Um, it has the same basic structure, same sort of story shape as the original. Obviously different actors and some of the character names are changed and so forth. But it's essentially the same movie, um, just kind of redone. That's a full ripoff. Then over here at 1, we have something where, let's say, they borrowed a name from another movie. Um, or um, there's a reference to... Um, another movie in the way of a, there's a plot point that plays out similarly. There's a reference, in other words, but that's it. So when we say something is a ripoff, I think we have to identify on what side of the scale this is. And to do that, we have to look at these two works, Blade Runner and Bubblegum Crisis. And honestly, I don't think it takes too much study to realize that these are two pretty different works. Blade Runner is a dark noir story. Um, Deckard is constantly um, outgunned, outclassed. He is doing his best, but is constantly getting beat up um, or otherwise pushed down by society. Um, and he is the sole protagonist. No one else wants to help out with him uh, or help him. Um, and it's sort of one man versus the world in that sense. And what I mean by that is that Blade Runner is the story of one man trying to solve a mystery. Um, it is a very you know, directed story about Deckard himself. Obviously, there are other characters and other things going on. But really, the focus of that story is on Deckard in this very noir, neon-lit world. Um, a world that feels very dark and twisted in a way. Very, very cyberpunk. Also, perhaps more importantly, the themes running through Blade Runner are all about humanity. Um, contrasting the replicants with humans. What does it mean to be human uh, in a world where uh, androids have become effectively the same as humans? Um, and so a lot of the dialogue in Blade Runner is very much about that, even when it's not necessarily clearly about that. There is an undertone around questions of identity and who people are and uh, what, people, what people think they are. So Blade Runner is this um, um, uh, sort of this tone poem about this theme around humanity and other things as well of course that's one of its primary themes bubblegum crisis is an action ova about four cute young women attractive young women who punch androids to death um it's a pretty over the top anime series um and while it does occasionally touch on you know are we any better than the androids for you know killing them when they kill us? Um, really, the themes of Blade Runner are not all that present 
in Bubblegum Crisis. Also, none of the plot is there, right? Um, yes, it has the same basic premise of androids run amok, but let's be honest, that is not a new premise. Um, even in by the time of Blade Runner. Um, so I think seeing um, seeing how Bubblegum Crisis takes that basic concept and runs with it shows you how much it is not really ripping off Blade Runner in that sense. The plot doesn't match really at all. And I think there's also an important tonal difference. Yes, the future Tokyo of Bubblegum Crisis um, does have a grimy, gritty layer of uh, 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 feeling to it, and yes, there is a cyberpunk aesthetic to Bubblegum Crisis, but I think it's it's quite different. Um, as I mentioned before, B uh, Blade Runner is really noir; it is dark and moody in a way that Bubblegum Crisis really isn't, being more of an action series. Yes, there are some moody shots in Bubblegum Crisis, but the overall sense of the world. Um, is not nearly the same sort of rain-soaked, dark, um, um, you know, always in the shadows with occasional glimpses of light feel that you get in Blade Runner. Also, more importantly, the protagonists of Bubblegum Crisis are young women trying to achieve justice. They are essentially superheroes. Deckard is not a superhero. Um, he is suspiciously resilient, um, but he is not fulfilling those same sort of tropes that the uh, the Night Sabers are in Bubblegum Crisis. Um, so that doesn't really match very closely either. So I think what you get in Bubblegum Crisis is a series that is clearly inspired by Blade Runner and carries uh, uh, with it a couple of underlying um, premise conceits, um, some you know, basic ideas for its premise, and some visual imagery, but otherwise takes a very different direction with it. Um, Bubblegum Crisis is not repeating Blade Runner. It is saying, hey, those moments in Blade Runner are cool. Those bits of Blade Runner are cool. Let's use that as inspiration in our work. So I would say, I would put Blade Runner um, and Bubblegum Crisis at maybe a, a, a three on the ripoff scale here at best. Why do I bring that up? Because I think it is important in our current media world to be aware of the words we use. Uh, when somebody comes to you and asks for a recommendation uh, and you launch into your explanation, you only get a couple of sentences before you can see it in their eyes. The other person is kind of like, okay, I got it, I got it, and they kind of start to check out. Um, so you only have so many words to speak to communicate everything that they're really going to get out of what you're talking about. And so when we use words like ripoff, I think it's important to, to recognize how strong that is and to use that word appropriately. Now, I'm not going to suggest that you sit down and, and say, okay, now on a scale of 1 to 10, you know, um, necessarily, although that wouldn't necessarily be a bad idea, um, but I, I would challenge you to be aware of when you're using these really strong words uh, words with negative connotations, and uh, employ those words with, uh, with the care and respect that they deserve. This is how we disseminate ideas, it's how we bring new folks into the fold of otakudom, um, and so, you know, let's, let's use the right words as much as we can, okay?